there, I'm Felipe Andreoli, and I'm here today to give you an overview of the ES8 from Boss. And not only an overview, but the way I use it, I'm a bass player, so uh, all the videos you've probably seen of it are from guitar players. I'm a bass player and it works just as well for me. All right, so uh, this is my pedal board. I'm using six pedals and I'm using six loops of the ES8. It actually has eight loops. You have like six mono loops. You have the seventh loop, which is uh, mono send and a stereo return. And you have the eighth loop, which is stereo send and return. I am using a few combinations of pedals. And the first thing I'd like to tell you about is the two main modes of operation on the ES8. The first mode is the memory mode. In this mode, you have the patches and you create the combinations of pedals that you want for this particular patch. So for example, in my patch number one, I have just the compressor and the preamp, which is loops one and two. So uh, this is the sound. So uh, let's say I forgot which loops I have active on patch number one. You can simply press the memory manual button and it will show you with the red LEDs which loops are active for this particular patch. In this case, one and two, one being the compressor, two being the preamp. In this mode, you don't have the combinations, but you have access to all the pedals inside the ES8 as they were lined up just in front of you. You don't have to reach out for any particular pedal. That's not how I use it. I use more the memory uh, mode with the patch combinations. But this mode is very useful in case you want to just uh, experiment with different combinations. So for example, I can add a chorus, which is my loop number three. And you simply press the loop and that's active. Or maybe I don't want a chorus, I want a drive, in which case I simply press loop number four. And let's say you like this combination and you want to save it. You don't even have to reach out for the menus with your fingers. You can do it all with your foot. The way you do it is you just keep press the memory manual button. And as soon as you see this blinking blue LED, you just press it twice and it's saved. So you didn't even have to use the menus for that, just your feet. It means that if you're playing uh, in a performance or in a rehearsal, you can just do it on the fly without having to worry about menus or any of that. Just uh, let me reverse this because this is not the way I use it. So I come back to the manual mode, which is the red LED, and I'll deactivate the loop number four, and I'll press and hold the memory manual button and press it twice, and it's saved again. So this is my loop number one, and loop number two, I have the same thing, but I've added the drive, which is my loop number four. So I've created the combinations that I use the most uh, in Angra and every other project that I do, using the same pedals with just different combinations. And the beauty of the ES8 is that you can have all the changes in, with just one foot. For example, on my loop number three, I have the storm patch. Storm stands for storm of emotions, which is a song. It's this song. So what I have in this patch, patch number three, is I have my compressor, my preamp, my chorus, and my delay. So not only I created this combination, but I also sent a MIDI message to the H9 telling which channel I want. You can uh, use up to eight MIDI channels on the ES8, meaning that you can control eight MIDI devices from the ES8. You simply daisy chain the MIDI devices you have, for example, 
my MIDI cable is going into the SY300 and from here it goes to the H9. I have the H9 on my second MIDI channel, MIDI channel 2, and I have the SY300 on my MIDI channel 3. So just quickly jump into the menu and show you how it's done. Uh, you go to edit, enter the patch, and you will find the MIDI function, just navigating on the arrows. And you see patch MIDI 1, that's what I'm using. You press enter. And it shows me that on channel 2, I have a program change for number 1. Essentially, I'm telling the H9 that I want the first patch, which is number 1, the delay, to be active, right? So this is very easy to do. You just simply um, select the channel and the program you want. Of course, you can do so much more uh, with all the MIDI capabilities of the ES8. I use very minimal MIDI, uh, MIDI stuff on the way I use the ES8, but you can do mostly anything. You can send, send for example, tempo for the pedals, or you can send very uh, specific MIDI messages to change parameters inside the patches on the SY300 or the H9 or whatever MIDI pedal you have. So it's very flexible, you can do mostly anything and I wouldn't even know how to tell you how to do that, but you can do that. So this is the way I use it. So I have the delay active on this patch. One of the coolest features of the ES8 and that makes it different from other similar products on the market is the ability you have to change the order of the pedals inside it. So you're not stuck with your decisions of which pedal goes into which loop. You can reorder the pedals as you like. So for example, my loop number one is compressor, two is preamp, three is chorus, four is drive, five is the H9, and seven is the, the SY300. But I can use the same pedals in any order. You simply go to edit, patch, and you find the loop structure menu, and here, you can, re uh, you can move any of the loops to anywhere you want. So for example, say I want my loop number three, which is the chorus, to be in front of the preamp. You simply go here and you send it there. And then you can press right three times and save it. And now that's done. And it's a very different sound, of course, when you experiment with the pedals, you notice that there's a very different uh, sound when you have modulation after or before the drive or vice versa. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna, and uh, notice that when you come back to the menu, it will auto automatically go to the last place you were. So I was in loop structure, that's what it's taking me. So I'm going to loop number three put it back right after my loop number two and right, and that's done. Of course, you can rename the patches. You have several, I don't even know how many, there's just too many uh, banks on the ES8. I use the banks in the following manner. My bank number zero is for the wireless system, and my bank number one is for the cable. So the ES8 has two inputs, one and two and you can select per patch which of the inputs you, you're going to use. So in this case, I have the wireless and the cable. You could have like two different uh, instruments with different sounds and different uh, volumes, and you can select per patch which one you want to use for that particular effect. Uh, so now I'm on my bank number one, which is cable, as you can see here. And you can, of course, copy the patches from one to the other and the banks from one to the other. And Boss is just releasing this month, finally, the editor for PC and Mac, which will make it a lot easier for you to edit your effects on the computer and save them and have a backup. And in case you have more than one unit, you can just copy the same uh, parameters from one to the other, so it's very flexible. But you can do it all from here as well. So moving on, another cool feature of the ES8 is that you have a dedicated tuner out so you don't need a tuner to be in your chain, which is pretty cool. And you have the mute switch 
So you also don't need a tuner for that. You just press the mute switch and it's all gone. And if you keep press the mute switch, you get the red LED and it bypasses completely all the effects on the ES8. <laughs> The ES8 has not only the, the loops, but it has also a dedicated volume loop. And that works not only for a volume pedal, which you can of course move anywhere in the chain you want, but that also works for a four cable method in case you use uh, the loop on the amp. So many people have, for example, the modulation effects uh, in the loop of the amp. So you have your signal going into the amp, then out of the loop to your modulation pedals, and then back to the amp. In this case here, you can use the volume loop to have any pedals you want in any position to be sent to the amp. So you just connect your loop into the volume loop of the ES8 and it works the same way, only it's way more flexible, of course. The ES8 also offers buffers in the input and the output. So in case you have some older pedals which are not true bypass or buffer, you can buffer them from inside the ES8. And of course, the greatest benefit of having a looper switcher like this one is you don't need to have all your pedals daisy chained in sequence, you know, because of course, when you have a lot of stuff going into your signal, the more you have it, the more loss you're gonna have, the more signal loss. And in this case, uh, when you have a looper switcher like this one, you only active, you only activate the loops you're really gonna use in that particular patch and nothing else. So all your pedals will be on all the time, but you will, you will select from the ES8 the ones you really need to use. The ES8 also has two outputs, and they work, of course, per patch. You can select output one or two or one and two in case you work with a stereo setup or if you work with different amps or whatever, you can record stereo signals. And you can also change the amp channel from the ES8 with the control outs. You have three stereo control outs, which you can transform into six different control outs for as many amps as you have. And you have also expression outs. So you can use an expression pedal and uh, affect more than one pedal at a time with the same expression pedal. You can also turn any switch on the ES8 into anything you like. You have the ability, for example, to use the bank switch to be a tap tempo for an analog, analog pedal which ex accepts a control in for a tap tempo. You can make a momentary or a latch switch. You decide if you want to latch, for example, you activate and it's activated and you then press again to deactivate or a momentary switch where it just works whenever it's pressed down and when you depress it, it stops working. You have all the flexibility, of course, in this video, I won't be able to show you all the functions of the ES8, but believe me, it's way, way over the top, everything that this can do. And uh, I use barely 10% of all the capabilities and all, already it's a lifesaver for me. Uh, it's just something I cannot live without anymore. It just makes it so much easier and so much cleaner uh, the way I organize my pedal board. I don't need to worry about order of the pedals going into another. Everything is just the way it better fits. You can see that my pedal board is already very crowded, but it doesn't matter because I can change the order as much as I like inside the ES8 and not worry about that. One last thing I'd like to show you is about the loop structure, the way you can move the pedals around and the way it affects the sound. So for example, on my patch number six, I have this shimmer effect on the H9. <laughs> and I have my volume pedal activated. Uh, you can notice that on patch number one, true five, the volume pedal doesn't work. Because I have not activated the volume loop. Of course, you can see that when you go to edit, patch, and you go to loop on and off, you will notice that you have the lights under the, the loops that are active at the moment. 
and the V stands for volume, and it's not activated. If you want to activate it, you just press plus or minus to activate or deactivate each effect. And if you come back here to loop structure, you can see the order that the patches are lined on. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can move them around as much as you like. It will, of course, affect the way it sounds because the way one pedal interacts with another changes uh, when you change the order. And in this case here, uh, let me go back to patch number six. In this case here, I have a different order. So for example, my compressor is on the end of the chain. I don't know why, actually. Let me put it back in place, just before the preamp. And my volume is now uh, in the first position, with me, which means that it's only affecting the clean sound, which is in the input here. See the, the I for input, then volume, then all my pedals. In this way, what happens is the volume is just affecting the clean sound. <laughs> Notice how the volume pedal only affects the bass sound and not the H9. The H9 continues to sound. And that's because the volume is right after the input. If I want to change that and have the volume pedal affect the H9 as well, I simply move it after the H9, which is loop 5. And now, it affects everything. And another very cool feature that you have uh, on the loop structure is the ability to create a parallel signal chain where you have different pedals that don't necessarily affect the main chain. So I'll show you how it works. You come here between pedals and you press enter. And this will create a parallel signal chain. And you can now move any pedals that you want or any loops that you want inside that chain. So now I have the H9, which is loop number five, being affected by the volume inside the parallel chain. And this is how it sounds. So now my volume affects only the H9. That means I can dose how much of it's sound I want with the volume pedal. You can do the same thing with the delay for guitar players that use in the solos. How much delay you have on that particular spot just by having a parallel effect. Or you could have, for example, a delay and a chorus that you don't want, want to affect the other and you put them in parallel. And now you have your signal going into each one of them and each one of them won't affect the other. So that's pretty cool to have a different sound and different sound possibilities. When you have these kinds of effects, like a delay or a reverb, where it has a very long decay, when you have a normal setup, when you change the effect, it will cut the sound of the, the delay or the reverb. On the ES8, you can have a carryover programmed. So when you change from that loop, the, the sound of the delay or whatever effect will carry over to the next one. So you won't have that abrupt cut. So it, this is something that's pretty useful for especially guitar players or anyone that really likes modulation effects or uh, delay, for example. That's pretty awesome. And also, I was able to eliminate uh, entirely a pedal from my set because of the S8 capabilities. What it is, is inside a US8, you have the ability to select the output gain for a patch. So for example, so on my patch number four here, I have my solo patch, which is the same as my patch number one, with simply the compressor and the preamp, but it has a 4 dB uh, output gain. So you come here to edit patch, and you go to output, you press enter, and you go to output gain, and you can select from zero to six plus uh, dB, that's allowed me to eliminate a boost pedal entirely. I have just the same sound with more volume for soloing. So 
So that's it. I hope I could give you an insight of how I use the Yes8. Of course, you will find many, many videos that have in-depth tutorials and explanations about all the capabilities of the ES8. This is the way I use it, which is a very simple way, and still it has changed the way I interact with my pedals entirely, and I cannot live without it anymore. If you want to know more about this product, the ES8, and every Boss product, you just head over to their website, which is here in the description. And if you want to know more about me and my work, you can go into my website, which is felipeandrioli.com, and there you'll find my social networks and everything. And I hope to hear from you. If you have any doubts or observations that you want to make, just reach out and we'll be in touch, okay? I hope you guys liked it and see you next time.